All right, welcome back to class two, uh, week two. I want to remind you again, this is important, do your homework, uh, lesson four, five, and six. And if you do all that as we go along, you won't have any problems uh, with your homework and classes and all if you do it. Now, if you wait till the last minute, uh, the last week to read this entire book, you won't get it done. And if you did, you wouldn't get anything out of it. So just read it as we uh, sign the reading to you. And don't worry about doing the questions yet. Uh, and, and later on, probably next week, we're going to skip over uh, to probably Lesson 24 and, and maybe in the preparation. Uh, but now in this class, I want to go to the first point of the main part of our course. And that is the definition uh, of uh, preaching. The definition of preaching. What is preaching? Preaching is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And if I asked you what you thought preaching was, and, and everybody that's listening to this uh, would, would have a different definition uh, of preaching. It reminds me of a story of this young man that God called to preach. And he had a godly grandmother. And he went to his grandmother and said, uh, Grandmother, God, I believe God's called me to preach. She said, well, let's see. And she sat down and, and she said, well, preach to me. And he opened his Bible and he said, uh, uh, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth. And he said, and that's how much he loves us. He loves us enough that he gave his Son. And she said, wait, stop, stop, stop. She said, boy, go get you a job. God had not called you to preach. You don't know anything about preaching. And she was going by her definition of preaching. And so the next, about a week or two later, he came back. He had a burden to preach. And he come back to his grandmother. and said, Grandmother, I still believe God called me to preach. She said, well, let's try it again. And he said, uh, and she said, start preaching. And he said, well, uh, bless God, uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that's how much hallelujah that God loves us. And she said, preach, boy. Preach. That's her definition of preaching. Uh, Ladder you got, better it was. Said the same thing, uh, but the way he said it. Now, I've done that myself. I've left the church and said, now that's preaching. Uh, and I have my own opinion of what preaching is. I like lively preaching. I like fiery preaching. I, I like that. But that doesn't mean everybody preaches that way. And uh, just because the young man uh, was laid back a little, uh, then that doesn't mean that he wasn't called to preach. thing you need to be careful with, though, is not to be boring in your preaching uh, because you want people to listen to you. And so uh, uh, don't try to be so dignified that, that you kill the service. Uh, but the definition of preaching is not how loud you preach or uh, how uh, uh, softly you preach, uh, but the definition of preaching, let me give you this. Now, let me give you this before I give you the definition. There's a big difference between having to say something and having something to say. Don't make the mistake of saying, I've got to preach Sunday. You, you, you don't have to preach. All you've got to do is just call them and tell them you're not coming. You don't have to preach. Uh, and we don't, we don't need to preach because we have to. I was a preacher fellowship back when I was a young preacher. And there's a well-known preacher there and a pastor uh, I was telling the brother today that, well, it's hard on us when we're coming up. And uh, there was a, uh, a well-known preacher sitting on the front pier, and the pastor, the moderator, got up. It was a preacher's fellowship. And he said, uh, uh, Brother, uh, come up here and preach for us. And the, and the brother made this statement. I didn't know I was going to have to preach. And the moderator said, Well, you don't have to. Keep your seat. And he said, Brother, you want to preach? And somebody else got up there and preached. Well, he said, it's real hard. Well, that is real hard, but that stopped me from ever saying I had to preach. And he taught me a lesson. I don't preach because I have to. Okay? Uh, I, I preach because I have something to say. I don't say something because I have to say something. So when you get behind the pulpit, have something to say. May, you may not say it as loud as somebody else. You may not say it as hard as somebody else. You may not say it as long as somebody else. Uh, but if you have something to say. 
Make sure you have prepared your heart and your mind and everything is ready and you've got it laid out. And when you're sitting there and, and, uh, and, and, they, and they give you the lapel mic or, or something, and that, that when you leave where you're seated and make your way to that pool pit, know within your heart that you have something to say. I've learned, and I told my wife this recently, I was going over uh, an introduction of a message and I told her, I said, you know, uh, a lot of things I say I don't prepare to say, and there's a lot of things I say that I, that I don't go over as much as I go over what I'm going to say the first five minutes. When I go to the pulpit, I know what I'm going to say the first few minutes. Now, that gives me peace, that gives me comfort, that, that helps me, give me assurance that I know that, that for the first three or four minutes. That's why you can't get up there and talk about other things. Uh, because you, you're going to get feud. I've already said you're not called to be a speaker. Uh, you're called to be a preacher. And the only preaching you ever do is out of this book here. And so uh, other things uh, that you try to say is going to mess you up. But when you go to a pulpit, it's good to have something to say and, and, and prepare. And uh, It's hard. If you go 35, 40 minutes, you say a lot of stuff. You say a lot of stuff. And you can't know exactly everything you're going to say. You, you've got your outline laid out and, and you've studied. And I'm going to show you how to assimilate material and how you assimilate that and how you saturate yourself with that and just fill yourself up with that and then you empty yourself. But but uh, uh, when you get a pulpit, and you, you can't know everything that you're going to say. I, I, it's amazing to me. I, I'd like to know one time a word count in a 45-minute message how many words uh, that a preacher say, uh, a normal preacher would say in 45 minutes. Say, uh, I know some folks that's written books and, and they uh, had these books uh, transcribed and they took what they preached and they typed it in and made books. I'd have, you'd be surprised how many chapters you get out of one sermon. It's amazing how you do that. Uh, but you, you can't have all that laid out exactly like you know what you're going to say. you got an idea, you know the thing. The theme that what I'm trying to get over one point. If you get one point over, uh, then you've done all right. Uh, but 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 you need to know what you're going to say when you get started. You, you need to have an idea of, of what you're going to say. If you, I even have it wrote down on my outline. You, you don't have to do this. I don't know many people that do. But but I put text, and then I even have my text typed out. Now, I read it out of the Bible, but if something went wrong, I got it broke down. Uh, could I tell you a story that happened years ago? I was going to Camp Canaan uh, camp meeting. I was a young preacher. And that's a big camp meeting now, but it wasn't that big then. It was back in the beginning. Still a lot of preachers there. And we was coming out of the dining hall, and, and I was a young preacher. I hadn't preached much. And I was coming out, and, and Brother Noel Broughton, the uh, pastor of the church and the moderator, come up behind me and said, I want you to preach tonight. And so, well, that scared me to death. And uh, all those preachers there. And so I said, well, you know, what? yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you don't want to ever tell anybody you won't preach because they won't ever ask you anymore. So uh, yeah, I said, sure. And so I was going to preach out of the book of Jonah. And, and I, was, I was sitting back there, and I couldn't find the book of Jonah. I couldn't find it. I just... I couldn't find the book of Jonah. Uh, now, uh, I had a message in the book of Jonah. I had prepared, I preached before, but something happened, and I was all messed up, and, and uh, I, I couldn't find the book of Jonah. And I asked the lady in front of me, and later on, her and his, her husband became good friends of mine, Brother Miller and Sister Eunice Miller. A pastor was at Sloan Valley then, uh, he's old. He's older now. And he, he he's in bad health. But I said, uh, Sister, would you find the Book of Jonah for me? And I handed her. And I'm getting ready to preach. I handed her my Bible, and she said, found it. She said, Here it is. And she handed it back to me. And she turned around and looked at Brother Bill, and said, This ought to be good. And so, uh, although I had something to say, it didn't appear that I had something to say. Uh, but but from then on. Uh, I know what I'm going to say when I first stand up. And, and, and I have my text rolled out on my outline. And I have my outline stuck out about that far uh, where, where I'm going to preach. Because if I can, if I can lose where Jonah is one time, 
that ain't happened to me again. And so I won't ever happen to me again. That was all right, a young preacher just started preaching. But a man as old as I am don't need to be asking people to find the book of Jonah. So I mark it well, and uh, I, I, I do an outline like this. I hope you can see this. I do an outline uh, like this, and uh, uh, I, I put my scripture, uh, and I put a few things that I'm going to say. And when I do that, I pull it way out like that so I can sit there and go over my mind uh, what's being said, what I'm going to say. And then when, uh, when they call on me to preach, at least I have a place to start. Okay, and I can find my scripture. But if I, but if I can't find the scripture, I've got it written down. And that's never happened to me before then or since then. And, uh, but it, it made for a good illustration. And uh, so God let that happen. To show me, uh, just because I've been there before, don't, don't mean that I can automatically go there again. So there's a big difference. Remember this. this may be, you may see this somewhere along the line. Uh, there's a big difference in having something to say and having to say something. This is a definition of preaching of what we're going to use here. Preaching is the proclamation of the Word of God to men by men under assignment. That word there, we're going to change that some. Uh, under assignment from God. A proclamation, proclaiming the gospel by men. It's amazing how God used men to do that. And how do you ever figure how God calls different people? Uh, call the people you wouldn't expect to call, least expect to call. Uh, I, I've, I've heard this many times over the years. Uh, well, God could really use him. Uh, and God could really use him. Well, he'd sure make a good preacher. And then they don't ever get called to preach. But the ones that least expect is one God's called to preach. God's going to get the credit and get all the glory. In 2 Kings chapter 4 is uh, 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 five miracles in there about God doing something with nothing. And uh, he filled the empty vessels. The barren woman uh, was given a child. The dead son was raised from the dead. The empty pot was filled and he filled, uh, he fed a hundred men with twenty loaves. That's the number of grace. That's, that's a grace a chapter there. How God worked those miracles. And God took nothing and did something with it. Uh, I, if I, I'd like to encourage you to look up definitions in your preaching. And I, I go to extreme on this uh, because I teach an English class and, and I look up everything. And, and when, I, when I was thinking about how God does something with nothing and that how I'm nothing and God take and use that uh, and, and, and as a preacher uh, and to proclaim the word of God to men, who, who am I? That God be mindful of me. That, that allow me uh, to be the one that's proclaiming the gospel when I'm sitting in a congregation of two or three hundred people or even less, 50 or 25 people. Uh, what made the difference? Uh, I, I say this all the time. God knows a willing heart. And, and, and God puts that desire because he knows uh, that you'll follow, follow that willing heart. And how God used certain people and I looked up the, uh, the word nothing. Now, if I asked you what nothing meant, you say it means nothing. But that's not what it means. That's what it is. Uh, you know, I asked you what a house is, and you say it's a house. Well, it's a house, but what, what is a house? And, and try to explain to somebody what nothing is. And that's what we are, and that's how God used us, and God's going to take the base thing to confound the wise. So what is nothing? And, 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 it, and it's actually in Webster's Dictionary. Nothing. And it says something that does not exist. And so I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything. In, in, in that uh, chapter there of miracles, they didn't have anything. They had nothing exists. Something didn't exist. Well, what do you have within you to make your preacher? Something that does not exist. Uh, and then I looked up little. So some folks got a little. Uh, some of us has nothing. And some folks has a little. Now, some of you listening to this, God, some of you don't have anything. And God can do anything with that. Uh, and, but then some of you got a little. And so what's the definition of little? Remember, nothing, the definition is something that does not exist. Little, the definition of that is uh, practically nothing. And so if you've got something that's practically nothing, 
And, and, and being practically nothing means you can't even hardly notice what you got. So that's the people that God uses. And why God does that is God to get the glory. And uh, uh, David said that uh, uh, when he slew the giant. He said, uh, uh, this, uh, God will deliver you in my hand uh, that, that, uh, that the whole earth will know that there is a God in Israel. So people hear you preach, uh, and you preach on the power of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, they'll glorify uh, the Father which is in heaven. And that's what the whole thing is. And so preaching is a proclamation of the Word of God to men by men on the assignment from God. So you're proclaiming the gospel, and you are under assignment from God. God has given you orders. And, and said, this is what I want you to do. Uh, imagine that every time you get behind the pulpit, uh, that you're on assignment from God. Uh, I also changed that and, and said, not only am I have to be under an assignment from God. So if you try to preach without being assigned that, and then, then you're going to fail. Uh, but also, uh, proclamation of the word of God to men by men on the influence of God. You have to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost of God. I heard a man say one time, uh, that had been saved long, he said, no man can say that much that fast uh, uh, unless God's with him. And I say that's true. If we say anything worth saying, as fast as we say it, and as much as we say, uh, do you know the danger, the danger there for, for making a mess is overwhelming as much as you say. And, uh, and so as, as we say those things, uh, we have to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. There's some things you don't need to do under the influence. You don't need to try uh, under the influence of alcohol. You don't need to uh, do anything uh, under the influence of drugs. You don't need. But if you're going to preach, you better preach under the influence of the Holy Ghost of God. And I don't have any problem with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you say, well, it's all right to say Holy Spirit. Well, the Bible says Holy Ghost. That's all right with me. Don't be afraid of the Word of God. It's alive. You got to let it go and it'll grow. Uh, I was preaching in the church and there's a man stood behind me one time and God really got in it. That's where I got that. And he jumped up right in my ear and said, this has to be the Holy Ghost. He put the emphasis on the Holy. And so uh, we're not worried about uh, uh, ghost or spirit. Uh, the thing about it is God's Holy. And when the Holy Ghost uh, deals with your heart and you are the influence. And how can you tell if you're on the influence? Well, you'll know if you're on the influence of the Holy Ghost of God. You'll know if you're preaching on the influence of God or you're being influenced by that congregation. Man said this, that I never know what I'm going to preach till I get to a church. I'd be scared to death to go to a church I know what I'm going to preach. And he said, I, I don't know what I'm going to preach till I get there. And then I look at everybody and see what's going on and then I know what I'm going to preach. Well, who is he on the influence of? Now, he's a good man, and that's a good thought, uh, waiting, and well, see, well, maybe God can take that and, and, and influence him then. But I'm not that well studied that I can wait to the last minute, get influenced, and then know what I'm going to say. I have to, I have to do more than that. And so uh, I'm wondering sometimes if we're not on the influence. Uh, I have preached salvation messages because lost people come to church. You look up somebody you've been witnessing to for years, they come into church, and more just put emphasis, put emphasis on, on salvation. I've done that before. Uh, and so if, if you're not careful, you'll allow, you allow that to influence you. And, and I mentioned this earlier in the class. It doesn't matter. If God influences you to preach something, uh, he knew they were going to walk in. You didn't know it until they walked in. But he knew it before they walked in. He knew they was going to be there. And he knew what you was going to preach. And he knew that. If you're under the influence, now if you, if you, go to an outline book. I wonder how many of us are influenced by outline books, uh, influenced by uh, other things. Now God can use all this stuff. I'm not putting all this down. But make sure God, when we preach, make sure we are. Uh, let me give you this. Uh, if, you, if you see something or hear something somebody else preach, make it yours if God touches your heart with it. If God warms you, He warms somebody else. So, so, uh, 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 make it you, but you got to make it yours. You can't just take what he's got 
and, and just and just use what he's got. Don't preach what he preached. Don't preach his message. Make it that message become your message, and and allow God to influence you to preach that message because he got it from somewhere else too. He heard he heard it or read something that that, that triggered a thought in him, and so he prepared that message. So if you hear him say that. Uh, so this oh, well, that's good. Uh, 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 Brother Caleb called me the other day and said he just heard a preacher say about Peter. He said uh, he preached a message. Uh, how much do you? How bad do you want to get to Jesus? And he said Peter wanted to get to him bad enough to try to walk on the water. Man, when he said that, that I, I said Brother Caleb, I can work with that, and he said I can too. So I'm sure he's going to preach that, and the man going to preach that, and Lord give me his thoughts to go with that. I'm going to preach that too. How bad do you want to get to Jesus? Bad enough to do something nobody's ever done before? Uh, how bad do you want to get to him? But we are uh, proclaiming the gospel under assignment of God. Why am I preaching? Because I've got an assignment. I've got orders to preach. And, and, and what influences me to preach I'm influenced by the Holy Ghost of God. There's, I want to say something that all hands don't sound right, but I want you to think about it. This one preacher said this. He says, I don't preach to see people saved. Now that's terrible thought. Oh, I want to see people saved every time I preach. But he said, I don't, but I had to fin hear him out. He said, oh, I don't preach to see people saved. But he said, boy, he said, I'm real disappointed people don't get saved. And I do all I can to see people get saved. I visit, I, I go door to door, I get people in church, I give invitation, I give a hard invitation for people to be saved. Uh, but so that's not why I preach. And then he said, I don't preach for people to straighten their lives out. He said, I like that. He said, I talk to people, I preach the gospel, I teach how to walk and how to live for God. He said, I do all that. And if I, if I don't have all this fool, he said, I'm so disappointed. He said, I'm so disappointed. He said, I've had a lot of people call to preach under my ministry. But that's not why I'm preaching. He said, I like it when it happens, and I'm disappointed when it doesn't happen. But that's not why I'm preaching. And, and then he said this. He said, I preach because I'm called to preach. Amen. And now, that, and first of all, when he started saying those things, First thought come to my mind, well, you need to quit preaching then if you don't preach for that. But he didn't say he didn't want to see that. He didn't say that was a desire. But before he ever saw anybody say it, he was called to preach. Before he ever saw anybody surrender to the ministry, he was called to preach. So he started preaching because he was called to preach. And because he's on the assignment of God. Why do you preach? Why are you a preacher? Why are you in this class? You're on the assignment of God. And it's a proclamation on the side of God. It is an ordained means. Ordained from God. God said this is what it is. This is God said this is what it is. It is an ordained means for the transmission of the word of God to a lost world. I preach because God ordained that. To be the way, the means to spread the message to a lost and dying world. And you try any other gimmick you want to, it's not going to replace preaching. Now, there's different ways that you can do preaching. Uh, preaching is not always just necessarily in the pulpit. Uh, there's other ways and other places that you can preach, but it's going to be from this book. And it's going to be proclaiming the truth of this book uh, if anybody gets saved. That, yes, that's God ordained. And we mentioned earlier that uh, some folks that, you know, Spurgeon said uh, they've got away from the gospel. Well, you're not going to see anybody saved unless you get in this book and proclaim that God said this is it. So as I'm called to preach, but I'm called to preach to see people saved. Uh, that's a result of preaching. That's not the reason, although that sure is a motivating factor. I uh, when I see people say it, it makes me want to preach more, and, and that's a result of Holy Ghost preaching. That's a result of the call. But start preaching, and then, and then people start getting saved. People start getting right with God, and boy, it gets you all fired up. Uh, but you're on assignment from God uh, to a lost and dying world. I'm going to wind this week up in just a, 
a few minutes, is an ordained means of the transmission of the Word of God uh, to a lost world. It serves also as an official means of grace for the building up and strengthening of the church of Christ. Uh, not only to see people say, you want to build a church? Preach. Preach. Uh, the, uh, the greatest churches you'll ever find is built that church on preaching. Now there's, there's some a large numbers of people going to preach where there's not a whole lot of preaching. But you want a good solid church that's doing the will of God and winning souls to the Lord and things happening. That church was built. It was started on preaching. Uh, if, if, if you men go out and start churches, and that's what I always suggest, young preacher, go out and start something. And, you, and I always say this, you know, if, if, if you have to fool with a mess later on, it's a mess you started yourself. And so you won't have to blame anybody else. So it's better if you just go out and start a church. Uh, and of course, everybody won't be able to do that. Uh, but if you do that, start that church on preaching. And, and, and start from day one, preaching the gospel. Preaching just right out of this book. And then God will bless you for that. It serves the official means of building up. That church wants the church to establish. If you want it strong, uh, an old preacher at IBF Fellowship at Tabernacle years ago, there was a young guy who got up and said, uh, you know how Tabernacle used to shout, we shout and everything. And praise the Lord, I like that. I'm all for that. And uh, But we do it quickly. And, and, and uh, this preacher got up and he was going to take advantage of that at, uh, at this fellowship. And he said, at our church, uh, we don't teach doctrine. Uh, we, we just shout her out. You know, he was trying to pump things up. Old preacher got up behind him and looked right at him. I'm telling you, it was different then than it is now. Looked right at him and said, Sir, where there's no doctrine, there's dummies. And so that's the truth. Amen. And so if you've got a church that's built on anything but the doctrines of God, Anything other than the Word of God, anything other than preaching, well, I won't go as far as he says and say that if, where there's no doctrine, there's dummies, but there certainly are immature Christians and there's babes in Christ and there's carnal Christians filled up in the place and a lot of people may be there that's not even washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, never been saved because, hey, it's by the foolishness of preaching uh, that we hear the gospel that awakens us to us to realize uh, that we need to be saved. All right. And so if you want to strengthen the church, uh, then that's uh, what you need to do. All right. I may be letting you out a little early. I, I, I didn't uh, get a good look at my watch when I started, but I'm sure you won't hold that against me if I let you out a little early. I want to remind you again, uh, please do your homework and do it on time. Read, uh, read uh, this book, uh, The Sign Reading, and it'll help you. Let's pray. Father, help us now. God and direct us, Lord, all you'd have us to do. And we praise you for it. Uh, help us do right. In Jesus' name, amen.